Healthcare is fundamentally personal, and the challenges faced in healthcare are personal as well. Many of these challenges won't just disappear with the introduction of new technology. Even though technology solutions are growing at a rapid pace with exciting new possibilities on the horizon, technology alone isn't the solution. Hello everyone, we just heard a very wonderful track of healthcare from none other than Kaiser Permanente Senior Vice President Bridget Carlin. Welcome ma'am to Your India TV with me Jasleen Khanuja and it was such an eye-opening conversation where you highlighted how AI and other uh, advanced technological elements are being implemented in the healthcare sector. So first of all let me ask you like how, what's your overall experience and feedback on Taikon 2023? Oh, well first of all um, thank you very much for having me. It's an honor to be part of this conference. Uh, I'm actually very impressed with the organization organization of the conference. It's a completely volunteer, but more importantly, the collection of speakers and participants and attendees are incredibly impressive. And when we think about applying technology specifically to healthcare, I'm very impressed with um, the caliber of uh, experts that have been uh, included here. If we look at healthcare as an overall industry, it has a history of adopting technology slowly. But today's market forces are creating urgency for innovation and better collaboration. We see that the number of new providers entering the market continues to grow. And some of these new entrants bring significant scale and significant uh, capitalization. We see industry consolidation that is breaking down traditional barriers. Consumer expectations are changing. Patients are increasingly comparing healthcare to other industries and demanding improvements in their experience. As a result, we see new offers every day, such as same-day prescription delivery and same-day appointments. This has forced all of us to shift to a consumer-first mindset. We see traditional providers with negative operating margins. The pressure is on to reduce costs and find ways to do more with less. Our population is aging. 10,000 baby boomers join Medicare every single day and demand for care will continue to increase. We see burnout and staffing shortages. In fact, 3.2 million more healthcare workers are needed just to meet the demand within the next five years. And it's estimated that over the next few years, we'll introduce $600 billion of additional cost into the healthcare system as COVID becomes an ongoing endemic. Our work in healthcare technology will be measured by how we address these issues in ways that provide better outcomes for those we care for, how we improve the quality of life for our healthcare providers, and how we deliver healthcare at more affordable cost anywhere at any time. So KP's goal of having an affordable healthcare for one and all um, is something that uh, we are able to make progress on very well. So can you summarize like post-COVID, what are the key developments? Well, from an industry perspective, I think uh, COVID taught us that um, our health is very personal. And from an industry perspective, it taught us that we have to move a lot faster. Um, COVID proved that we can move fast. And uh, as a result of some of the challenges around remote working, uh, remote patient care, um, we learned to um, accelerate our digital transformation. And so that's probably the biggest impact uh, COVID taught us. And from a progressive, as we go forward, one of the objectives we have is to continue that momentum and making sure that not just our patients, but our caregivers are also supported by the technology that can help them do their job and for our patients get better outcomes. Healthcare technology needs to assist. Technology needs to assist or augment the caregiver and the consumer. One of the most exciting areas of opportunity is the potential of AI and automation. For caregivers, technology can assist them to be more productive. It's exciting, but, but now it's critical. According to a recent American Medical Association study, half of all care providers um, responded that they have burnout. We must look for innovative ways to improve the caregiver experience and increase overall job satisfaction. 
For example, physicians have shared with me the challenge they face with responding to messages from patients. We've helped improve the connection between physician and patient, but now the physician's inbox is filling up on top of an already busy day. This means physicians are often responding to messages around the clock. AI can help with this. By using natural language processing, AI can assist physicians in responding to messages, keeping it personal, but helping them respond more quickly and reduce the level of effort needed. For patients, there is opportunity to apply AI to help personalize our healthcare. For example, in the areas of wellness and preventative care, AI can help lead to more meaningful lifestyle changes. A patient with asthma can preemptively receive notifications on weather conditions that may exacerbate symptoms with suggestions on steps to take to avoid an attack. A teenager can receive personalized guidance on improving sleep quality and managing anxiety. A pre-diabetic can receive personalized coaching on adding physical activity and healthy foods. Technology can help improve the success of these preventative interventions that have enormous benefits. Since AI is uh, now um, on everyone's head, uh, do you think that using AI around human element for the benefit of human mankind uh, is something that we are looking forward to or do you still see the threatening experiences of AI that we hear from a lot of people? Well, um, I think, uh, like with all new technology, um, we have to be, um, uh, we have to understand how we apply it, and we have to take responsibility and accountability for how we apply it. So, um, just as with automation, we saw that with automation, we see that now with AI. Uh, we need to own and be accountable for the outcomes that uh, we use to generate either insights or actions, um, and we need to make sure we apply um, and innovate with AI responsibly and uh, securely. So from an AI perspective, I am cautiously optimistic. I think that as we um, keep our uh, ethics and principles in front of us, um, safety is probably the number one, safety and security um, as it relates to um, trusted uh, outcomes is really the most important. And what about data? We are each generating an extraordinary amount of data that can be leveraged to improve our personal health, but we've not yet begun to really tap its potential. As an industry, we are sitting on 97% of our data that is not used. That's a staggering amount. So why is AI top of mind now? It's been around for decades, so what's different? Well, there are three key drivers. One, we now have access to vast amounts of data. We are generating 50,000 gigabytes of data per second. That's incredible. All of this data can enable the AI models to be trained and improve as they get trained over time. Two, there are significant advancements in software that have made it easier to build and test AI models. And three, we have more powerful compute capability available to build large AI models, including the large language models that are uh, enabling tools like ChatGPT, BARD, and Bing. And while there is fear about the implications of AI, it's here and we're all using it. Adoption is rapidly increasing and it's reinventing healthcare as we know it. With AI, we can drive a better patient experience before a visit happens. The challenge for us as technology leaders is that we have to direct its application in safe and healthy ways. We've seen benefits from leveraging AI tools, such as in radiology, to assist with diagnosis of complex image patterns, and in drug therapies and vaccine development, where AI was used to accelerate finding elements that would improve the strongest immunological response. But there are risks with AI models, risks with data, due to poor quality, as well as inherent bias that can jeopardize progress toward achieving health equity as well as fuel ongoing uncertainties as to the reliability of the generated outcomes. As innovators, we must apply AI in areas that reinforce trust. Trust is fundamental in healthcare. We all trust our physician's advice. Maintaining and building on that trust is crucial. The goal shouldn't be to replace the clinical experts, but instead help them accomplish more, providing more transparency, more insights, and more flexibility. And our use guidance needs to be clear. 
very simple. Number one, don't trust the data, always verify it. And number two, own the accountability of the outcome generated. If you follow just those two simple principles, you're, you're much more likely to have success and reduce any type of uh, risk or vulnerability into your, into your company or into your systems. Mm -hmm.